Hello and welcome. In this week's episode, we're going to be exploring three historic gardens in the city of London. Now, amazingly, for an area that's only roughly a square mile, the city of London has over 300 open spaces. Some of the so-called secret gardens in the city are actually pretty famous, and this includes Postman's Park that has the wonderfully poignant memorial to heroic self-sacrifice, as well as the utterly gorgeous St Dunstan in the East, laid out as a garden in 1971 in basically a bombed out church. But these gardens have really been covered all over the internet and so today I thought I'd choose three other historic gardens in the city and give you some ideas for other places to explore. My name's Katie, your guide to London's hidden history. I'm a qualified Blue Badge tourist guide and I run public walks, private tours and virtual tours across London. There's more information on how you can book a tour in the description below. Where better to start than the oldest public park in London? Today this is known as Finsbury Circus, but in 1527 this was a moor that was drained and laid out with gravel public parks. And you can see it here in 1676 on the map by William de Morgan. In the early 1800s, George Dance the Younger had an idea to transform it into the oval shape that we know today, and the works were completed between 1815 and 1817. It was surrounded by businesses and shops, and they used it for their own private use, but it was only in 1900 that an Act of Parliament was passed, opening the garden once again to the public. From the 1920s, there was a bowling green in the centre, and the current bandstand dates in the 1960s, replacing an earlier one. It's only recently been open again to the public, because for a number of years it was used as an access site for Crossrail, but thankfully it's once again open for Londoners to enjoy. Next, we're heading to Seething Lane Gardens. As a garden, this is relatively recent, relayed out in 2018, with money given from the Four Seasons Hotel that you can see behind. However, it is an incredibly historic site. This blue plaque shows you that it was once the site of the Navy office, where in the 17th century, Samuel Pepys worked and he also lived. And it was while he was living here that he wrote in his diary in the 1660s, and episodes from this are carved into the paving stones. This includes his account of the Great Fire of London. Famously, when the fire was raging, he buried his Parmesan cheese and bottles of wine, keeping them safe in this very garden. Shows he's a man with his priorities right. But the history goes back even further, because this garden is the site of an ancient custom that goes back to 1381. Constance Knowles, the wife of Sir Richard Knowles, who lived here in the 14th century, wanted to build a bridge, getting better access to her garden across the street. But she failed to get the proper planning permission. As her husband was a pretty important guy, the city authorities decided to let her off with just a small fine, in fact a single red rose, to be paid annually to the City of London authorities. The Knowles Rose Ceremony still happens every year, and it involves snipping a rose from here, presenting it on the altar cushion of the nearby All Hallows by the Tower, and then processing to Mansion House to see the Lord Mayor of the City of London. Our next garden is pretty close to Mansion House, home of the Lord Mayor of the City. But it's worth pointing out before we get there that there are several reasons that we have amazing green spaces in the city today. Sometimes it's because these are former churchyards and you can't dig down into consecrated burial grounds. Another reason is that these are former bomb sites and this is the case with Cleary Gardens that you can find on Huggin Hill. 
During the Second World War, a local city worker, Joseph Brandis, saw that this site had been decimated by a bomb. He decided to transform it into an open public garden. He even brought soil from his own home in Walthamstow. And a few years later, in 1949, the Queen Mother herself opened the garden. Today, these are known as Cleary Gardens, named after Fred Cleary, chairman of the Metropolitan Public Gardens Association. Because of his tireless work campaigning for open space in the city, he is given the nickname Flowering Fred. Beside the blue plaque, look a little closer and you can see evidence of the city's only vineyard. We're very close to the historic wharves, where wine was imported from France since medieval times. And to mark this history, in 2007, the Loire Valley region gifted a grapevine to the City of London. But there's even more history to uncover here. Firstly, peer over the brickwork and you'll see that we're on top of the tube lines going into Mansion House Station. This opened in 1871 and originally these rail lines ran on steam power. So this cut and cover method left gaps for the steam and the smoke to escape. But even deeper underground, there's more history. This was the site of one of the largest Roman bathhouses in Londinium, thought to have been on the site between the 1st and 3rd century AD. It was a public bathhouse, so Londoners could come here to relax, socialise, network, and just to contemplate life. So, sort of similar to how it's used today. I love to think of Londoners doing the exact same thing almost 2,000 years ago. As I mentioned, there are hundreds more of these gardens within the city of London, and so I'd love to hear about more of your favourites in the comments. I'll be back next week with more of London's hidden history.